beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, I am Reverend Lou Ventura of Franklin Presbyterian Church in Franklin, Virginia, and together with the entire FPC family, I would like to warmly welcome you to this time of worship. Sisters and brothers, let us join our hearts as we worship our God. Join me, if you would, in the call to worship. An angel spoke to Mary, do not be afraid. The child she carries will be God's son, and the world will never be the same. An angel spoke to Mary, do not be afraid. God was with her, and God is with us, drawing us into worship and praise. Please pray with me. We bring our spiritual hungers to this place, O oh God, hoping to be fed. We bring our weariness, expecting to find rest for our souls. We bring our dullness, asking that we might be alerted to those things that you consider important. We come because we want the scattered fragments of our lives to come together in a meaningful wholeness. You have promised to be with us. Reveal yourself to us here, we pray, in the name of the one who came to share with us this human life. Amen. As we anticipate the birth of Jesus Christ, we light candles of hope, love, and peace. Reminders of the promise that Emmanuel is our God with us and that God graciously gives us these gifts, even if they sometimes come in ways that are mysterious to us. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the fourth candle, the candle of joy. We fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he came down to earth and took on our humanity, endured the cross with all its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God in heaven. The day is coming when there will be everlasting joy to the world, for our Lord will come. Let all the earth receive her King. We light this candle of joy in the anticipation of that day. Well, we're in the fourth Sunday of Advent, and I think that calls for a Christmas carol. Let's sing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
like a great light in a land of deep darkness. The mercy of the Lord shines upon us. Trusting in God's grace, let us together confess our sin. Faithful God, we know that you are always there to guide us, yet we often make plans without listening to you and discover that our human agendas can drown out our ability to hear your will for us. We repent of these faults and turn to you in love. Forgive our offenses and pardon our sins, that our lives may magnify your holy name forever. Amen. My friends, hear the promise of the Lord. See, your salvation has come. You are a holy people, redeemed by God, sought out, not forsaken. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Join me to the in singing praises to the giver of this good news. Future. 
Mary chooses to reflect God's glory by becoming an integral part of God's plan to establish the house of David forever. So listen for a word from the Lord in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 47th verse. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved. Thanks be to God. With a maturity rarely seen today in one so young, a poor unmarried girl magnifies the Lord, and her spirit rejoices in God, her Savior. She considers herself blessed in her loneliness. Living in an economically poor country that is occupied by an often heartless military, she still praises God and considers that God has done great things for her. Her God is a God of action, of strength tempered by mercy. Her God is a God who reorders and reprioritizes, bringing down the powerful and lifting up the lowly. Her God is a God who has filled the hungry and sent the rich away empty. Her God is a God who has helped Israel in fulfillment of the promises to Abraham and his descendants. Mary's song is full of praise, yes, but it is also full of humility. She focuses on God and on herself only as someone who can offer herself to God in this new thing God is doing as a grateful response to what God has done for her and her people. She defines herself only as she relates to God. There is no pride here. In accepting this turning point in her life, Mary does not consider herself special or revered. Blessed, yes, but not special. Though the angel calls her favored, she still sees herself as ordinary. She remains humble, and the lack of pride is a significant point brought out by Andrew Purvis, a theologian and retired professor at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. Dr. Purvis writes that there are significant moral warnings in these verses. This is how he puts it. God does not approve of prideful people, or of powerful rulers who disregard the lowly in their charge, 
or of rich people who get fat while the hungry starve. God uses in special ways and looks with favor upon those of low estate. God scatters the proud and brings down the powerful from their thrones in order to fill up those without status and rights. Moral warnings indeed. Now, I will admit that I have reached an age that sees where lowered expectations of younger generations have created some moral ambiguities. But when an immoral person is placed in a country's highest position, it can be no surprise that moral standards begin to quickly decline. It happened all throughout the Old Testament with crooked kings, and it happens today in the news. These words and perspectives from Mary are guides for our lifestyle decisions and ethical action. They're not just part of a sweet Christmas story to be hauled out and marveled over each year. This is a morality and a lifestyle to be expressed every day. Glorifying God by basing our decisions on God's priorities. The socioeconomic and cultural and political policies we support individually and through our elected officials at every level and our decisions on how we will work to be the hands and voice of Christ are critical, not only to those who are the least and the lost, but they matter to God. They matter for our lives today and next year, and as a factor in our eternity, in the coming of the shalom of God's own kingdom, And we ignore these moral warnings at our peril. N.T. Wright's words come back to me here. Bishop Wright believes that there is continuity between life now and eternal life. He believes, as do I, that the Christian community can produce building blocks that God will use to determine the shape of that eternal life. What we do in the present, painting, preaching, singing, sewing, praying, teaching, caring for the needy, loving your neighbor as yourself, all of those things will last into God's future. I like to think that Mary had some inkling of this. Her agreement to bear the Son of God, after all, is the cornerstone of our faith and of God's future. Thanks be to God. Amen. Having heard the word proclaimed, let us uh, respond by affirming what we believe in a portion of the PCUSA's Confession of 1967. Out of Israel, God in due time raised up Jesus. His faith and obedience were the response of the perfect child of God. He was the fulfillment of God's promise to Israel the beginning of the new creation, and the pioneer of the new humanity. He gave history its meaning and direction and called the church to be his servant for the reconciliation of the world. Amen. My friends, let us join our voices with Mary 
who celebrates God's greatness and sings of God's blessing for all who are poor and oppressed. Please pray with me. Eternal God, we pray for the world that our warring ways may be overturned even now through the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ. For nothing is impossible with you. We pray for the mission of your church that we may proclaim the good news of the age as we rejoice in the gift of our Savior. We pray for all who suffer, that we may feed the hungry and lift up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. We pray for your creation, that we may safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. We remember before you those who have died and pray for those who will die today, that they may rest with you eternally in your kingdom where there is no end. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we magnify you, Almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Joining Mary's joyful song, our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. With humble and grateful hearts, let us dedicate our offerings to God. Once again, please pray with me. Holy God, your love is magnified in the gift of your Son, whom you so freely share with us. Bless these gifts that we offer to lift up the lowly and fill the hungry in your coming reign of justice and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to live and how to love and how to pray. So we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Another Christmas carol. Hark the herald angels sing.
join us for Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock on Thursday. Please RSVP to the church office as soon as possible so we know how many are coming so we can keep you safe. And now, my friends, do not be afraid, for God is with you and will strengthen you for the journey he has planned for you. Magnify the Lord and rejoice, for nothing is impossible with God. And may the blessing of God who creates, redeems, and restores be with you now and always. And finally, go forth with courage and shalom, remembering who we are. We are a community of believers called by God to live humbly in the spirit of Christ and to act as his voice and hands in our world. Amen.